Hi, this is Rich. Welcome to my blog. Uh, Aguil and I are going to talk about entity stuff and uh, how entities almost kicked our ass the other day. <laughs> <laughs> we kicked back. They, it's like fucking big, crazy shit's been going on as we're doing this entity work. Uh, but also, um, we've been doing uh, 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 past life work and so contract revocation stuff and uh soul fragment retrieval all in one fucking session one session we're doing it's we're, we're doing it fucking all, we're doing all of it it's like what are you fucking doing you can't do that nobody nobody did, nobody's done that nobody's doing that shit you can't be doing that shit and we're going after these entities uh, and the reason is is because you can see that shit fucking crystal fucking clear. Wait, when I ask you to like look for an entity and you see, uh, uh, which one? Uh, yeah, I know. It's like, which one? <laughs> when uh, I say, well, is there a, uh, an incident of a, you know, of another causing you, you know, that whatever the fuck, do you see like just a little image here, a big image? What do you see when I like, if I, if I ask you right now, let's just do it right now. Focus. Uh, okay, uh, Agmila, um, could you uh, focus in on a um, a spacecraft that has a friendly human ET on it right now? Could you like? Can you do that? Just give okay. it a moment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's ask her what the fuck did she see? Because if you ask me that, I'm going like, bam! It's there. It's gone. I saw it. It was like, uh, uh, you know how, uh, this is terrible, but you know how like uh, in these old Japanese uh, videos of uh, when the place got nuked, uh, and sometimes you'll you'll see a, sh a like a burn shadow, vague shadow of somebody on the wall. <laughs> Just ashes, right? And there's nothing left on the wall, it's concrete wall, but kind of a burn mark looking place it's like creepy shit but it's like a vague image of what was there that's my image when i see shit that's that's it i can focus in and i can get all the details but i can do it one little step at a time what do you see when i when i ask you about your your in et thing uh yeah. medium-sized spaceship like i had i guess like 200 300 meters uh, i don't know how many is going to be in feet yeah uh, but yeah like there's a like a lounge and like it's it's pretty light like the walls and the light and everything is like you know the like whitish more like white white and gray and there's like orange stripes you know in the walls like that's the design and like lots of rooms three levels uh, 175 rooms in the ship like there's a little you know like warehouse or storage place. You know, like where they have like little little ships and pods where they can like just drop out people or beings out of the ship and stuff. Like, there's lots. Yeah. Wow. Now, if you were to go through that ship right now and like talk to somebody, can you hear them talking and stuff? Yeah. Is it like do you hear the audio and stuff? Yeah. For me, it's it's super simple because like when you tell me something, uh, I basically shift the consciousness. Like part of me is gonna be here, so that I'm aware I'm hearing you and all, but part of me shifts there, so I have both the visuals, the sounds, the feelings. Like I'm experiencing several things at the same time, like this physical and the other place that I'm in. Like as always. Wow. People can tell me stories like how they were, they were going to the mall or doing something, and I will be like right there with them. <laughs> you know. Wow. <clears throat> the way I would, uh, my some of my theories or philosophy on what's happening is that you're able to uh, tap into the holographic multiverse because that's all it is all of this is holographic and it's created by thought and some of it is technology enhanced but it's all by through thought and the um this this thing we call the kashik record or we call the mind of god it's, it's the you know the past present and future every nanosecond of the experience future and past multiple timelines um 
if you can focus in on one of these timelines or one of these events, past, present, or future, and you have the ability that you have, it's like, you see it, you're there. It's that simple. And it's like, why can you see that? Well, it's, it's the Akashic record. It's, it's, it's the record of everything sort of thing. Uh, so you can do that. Um, is, is, my, is my theory on and what it is and, and what's, what's going on. That would make sense. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's like, uh, I like this working together because uh, I might have the visuals, I might have the experience, but it's more like you have the knowledge. So I can, whatever I can find out over there and learn, I bring out here and I tell you all about it. And then you get like, your Bible goes on, you know, like even more about it. <laughs> you can tell me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I have a, a way of tapping into that knowing thing too, but um <clears throat> when you do this kind of guided work <clears throat> it works better guided because well i'm talking to akvila giving her guidance or look at this go over there ask this question you know um um look at this detail look for a reptilian or look for a, a you know gray or look for the ai or, or something I'm, I'm doing the guiding and I have to use analytical thought here, processing here. Uh, I'm like awake in the physical world and my wavelength is like beta, you know, and there's a little bit of alpha or some other shit going in the background for me, but I've got a lot of my analytical beta brainwave stuff going to analyze what to do next. Now, if you're traveling, like Avila's traveling, you don't want to be having your analytical beta brainwave shit going because that will draw you back to here and put too much of your attention and focus here. <clears throat> so it works better if the traveler or the, re the remote viewer or the out-of-body traveler doesn't have to try to and like, okay, what should I do next? Or what I'm going to, you know, what, what now, what now? No, I just, <clears throat> I just give her some guidance, look for this, do that. And uh, then she can just get involved doing that. That's, that's my theory on, on why and how the guide helps uh, make it work better. I like it. You like it? Good. good. Yeah. Like you can <laughs> when we're doing these sessions together, like uh, your guidance is useful. Like you know, I see too many things. You know, you're you're like asking, okay, like focus on the entities, and I'm like, okay, there's entities inside my body, around us. There's a space. I see, I see spaceships. There's a planet. There's this and that. And like I see them all. Like I'm just like tracking all of it. And then you told me what to focus on, like exactly, like not everything, but just one thing. <laughs> so like you know, yeah. this, that this focus helps. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the thing too, because <clears throat> the way the mind is set up, the subconscious mind, it compartmentalizes uh, pain and unconsciousness, but it also has a great filing system for that pain and unconsciousness. And the, if you're going to go after a traumatic incident in a past life, you want to be able to stay focused on that one specific kind of pain or because you don't want to get into all your shit all at once because your filing system will bring it on uh, and you will recall and re-stimulate too much of your subconscious stuff and you normally feel it like uh, unhappy feeling, un sad, bummed, <laughs> tired, too much, overwhelmed, all that stuff. So you need to be able to guide the traveler and help them focus their attention uh, and keep it focused on one thing that you're after, whether it's pain or unconsciousness or whether it's, you know, um, building fences, doesn't matter. But you wanna, you wanna be able to help keep that attention focused so they don't, their, their attention doesn't go all over the place. So that's another, another thing we do. Yeah. For me, like, I, I can really relate to it because like lately we've been doing sessions and they've been getting harder because like we're doing a whole lot more work than we used to. 
And so, mm -hmm. for example, we conjured on an issue or something, and I instantly recall my past life related to it, like some earlier incident or something. And so, mm -hmm. uh, we can just like address it, and I've already seen it, and I get like super tired all of a sudden. It's like uh, like they're sleepy tired, and we're going through this, uh, the session and all kinds of steps, and like later we address the past life, and once we go through those incidents like probably a few times and just find even like earlier and earlier like the earliest like all those and like after i go through most of them we'll find like the earliest like finally i start waking up like I, i've been through it i've experienced it again i've been able to let it out talk it out so notice something new about it and once we're done with the process like all the sleepy tired goes away and i'm like i'm awake again so it's, it's amazing how this work works you know just it all works it's really amazing yeah it releases literally it releases in laughter or big sighs or yawns or sometimes you'll stretch and you'll feel better and but you you do you wake up and and also heat off off of your body and stuff um but it does release um when you do it right if you did it wrong it'll really fuck you up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it will it will man you know i don't want to do this shit anymore this is no fucking fun <laughs> I did, uh, I've done like a few hundred hours of the past life stuff. That's a lot. Yeah, uh, getting the sessions. Uh, so it kind of opens up your memory. And so now you, you get to feel for it. So I can, I can recall all kinds of times and places, you know, just give me a number of years ago, it'll come right up. And, and it'll, Agvila can do that too, but, uh, and you so you want to be not just uh, what were you doing you know 365 million seven hundred fifty three thousand years ago bang you know I got some and Aguila probably does too but you know <clears throat> uh, well you know it's like well how many weeks months and minutes what are you asking for you know what do you want to see exactly like I did a lot in that year you know years that many years ago I wasn't just like oh I set on a fucking rock for five years <laughs> no <laughs> so you want to be very precise uh depending on what you're doing you know um but uh you learn a lot when you do it but i don't see the visuals as well as Aguila does i can get all the details but i have to go through the incident several times and pay particular attention to one thing and then i'll see it but i have to really have that guidance and w once you learn how to do this <clears throat> uh you can do it solo you can do it on your own but it's uh, a lot harder to uh deal with if you have somebody you can after you go through that stuff and you can open your eyes and go whoa let me tell you what just happened you know it feels better to get something off your chest you you just say it oh man you can't you won't believe how bad my day was at work it was like oh my god i gotta tell somebody it's that that phenomenon so when you look at your past life incident, you go, uh, 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 if you can just like open your eyes and somebody's there listening because they've been your, your guide there, and you go, uh, 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 and you feel better because it does, it releases. <clears throat> so it's like that. Hmm. Yeah, I like it. And like for me, uh, when we're doing this sort of work, uh, we can just address the item and like if I count on the past life, for example, and we are just talking about an issue we, we, you're just talking about it and like hey what, what if what if this and that you might have might ask him might ask me a question and while asking me a question i already had clicked on the country incident like just let's take five like a few hour incident every single detail all, all the conversations every action every single detail of the room or surroundings you know all kinds of things while you are asking the question yeah. <laughs> you know? so we like you i have great visuals but it also takes a lot of confront because there are some really bad things going on sometimes. You know, like it's traumatic, it, it, it hurts and stuff. And the way I am, like I'm more of an empath. So I experience it all over again. And like it takes a lot of confront to be able to experience it and like uh, feel it again, think of it again, and then express it and you know, just let it out. It's uh -huh. so sad. It's just like, it, it can be really bad. <clears throat> yeah. Well, what are the, some of the changes you've noticed in yourself since doing this kind of work? Well, you know, we've been addressing certain subjects that, that have to do with other people, uh, specific people in my life. And I, I noticed that now when I interact with them, my whole uh, 
the way I perceive them, the way I feel around them, is, is not as bad as it was. Because, you know, just meeting that specific person, will, like, it really get me locked up, triggered, and feeling bad, suppressed, and, like, there were, like, a lot of things going on. And now it's like, you know, just, we're just passing through and, like, nothing happens. I'm, like, in my own world, but I don't get triggers anymore. So that's good. Like, that's, that's a few days after, after the session. Also, I think, like, I'm, like, all harder to be triggered and um, just feeling better about myself. Easier to talk, easier to express myself. You know, just that stronger, f free feeling inside. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Good. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, this was going to be another short video because uh, who watches a video after 10 fucking minutes, right? <laughs> so, uh, we're right around 10 minutes. I, at the beginning, I mentioned something about e entities, and then we got kind of sidetracked. Yeah. Uh, so, just to wrap it up here, this last few minutes, uh, talk more about entities. So, things I've learned working with you uh, about this entity stuff is how they work. And this is quick and dirty. Uh, some of the ways they work <clears throat> there's all sizes and levels of entities you know like reptilians you know 18 foot tall fucking creatures on spaceships and to like uh smart dust the stuff you inhale <clears throat> um it comes from the chemtrails and stuff that stuff is programmable that's why i call it smart and uh not only do you have particles uh nano sized particles but there's entities that size as well. It, it's just like a, a one, one live cell from a blood cell. It's alive. So that you've got life essence in it, not just physical blood pumping or something. It's the essence, the consciousness, the spirit. There's life in that. Um, programmed to survive and all that stuff. Uh, so the advanced technology, these ETs, extraterrestrials, that's been doing this stuff for millions and millions and millions and billions of years of how to uh, control and dominate others have refined the technology on how to program clusters of entities, nano-sized entities, and bigger, you know, size of your fist, the size of your fucking head pumpkin well not pumpkin, but uh watermelon <laughs> um all kinds and they can be like entities and demons in your space that you can see like uh, i'll can see those pretty clearly but they can be little bitty things like this or they can be, look like clouds uh in your space or dark spots in your in your space when you can look closer into them you can see more clearly what they are <clears throat> and uh, they usually have an agenda. If they're in your space, they have an agenda. Uh, there's some agreements that you've, you've made that are somehow relating to them that allow them into your space. That's why a soul contract revocation uh, technique will help get rid of entities in your space. But there's all kinds, all kinds of ways and techniques to, to get rid of them, and they're messing with us in so many different ways. Okay, so... <clears throat> What we've been learning is the hierarchy sort of thing. Do you want to share the hierarchy as you? No, yeah. you go on. <laughs> oh, okay. So you got we got this nano size shit in our body. We wake up and feeling like crap. Uh, we have this, this stupid thought that makes us feel bad, and we go, "Well, what if? What if? What if?" We have a bad dream. You wake up feeling like, mm -hmm. "Well, <clears throat> the way these this entity stuff is programmed is that." They can trigger an emotion in us, and then that will fire up the entity essence, you know, the, the spirit or the thought essence of the entity or the entity cluster. And now it's just like a, a zombie or a, you know, a, a freaking a hypnotic, something under a hypnotic trance, and it's just doing what it's been programmed to do. And so it will create a feeling or a, an urge or a belief or a fear or something in you. And you'll feel it because you don't, you can't tell the difference between your thoughts and it's, because it's blended, <clears throat> your feelings and it's feelings. But what we can do is turn off our, we're like done thinking that thought. We can turn it off, except it's still there because we turned off our thought, but we didn't turn off the entity 
or the cluster thinking, but we think it's our thinking. So then our thinking says that we didn't turn off that thought when you did. So now you're living the lie of, I can't turn off my thought. And then you're living in limitation because you're living in the lie of what you believe about your own thoughts and feelings. But if we were left alone without this entity infestation, archon infestation, then we would be more empowered because we empower ourselves through our thinking or we limit ourselves through our thinking. We think it and then we agree with what we're thinking. Either it's limiting or it's it will be liberating. So anyway, uh, we trigger this entity stuff. Now it's making a feeling or a thought thing in us and it, it just keeps coming back and coming back. So these things, if you start getting on start figuring it out and start doing the entity work, you can blow this entity stuff away. You spot the truth of it and it has to, it will take off for its own survival reasons because we're so powerful when we look at stuff, we, it will, it is affected by our thoughts and our emotions and feelings. So if we know what to do and how to do it, we can spot what it is about our relationship with that entity or that cluster of entities and it will leave. Or we can forcefully eliminate it or move it out of our system. But it's like Wi-Fi. It's, it's phoning home and say, ah, oh, busted. Yeah. And it, uh, it kind of like red flags another level, a higher order of entity or archon or being, which uh, often are the grays. Could be a demon, a demon entity uh, as a big, you know, in and of itself, a, as opposed to these micro, you know, micro fucking entity things. Uh, but then higher up from the demon stuff, you would find the grays, extraterrestrial, interdimensional grays, kind of doing the, the grunt work and the minion being the minions for the reptilians or oh, higher levels of uh, grays, tall grays, others like that. But then ultimately, you got the reptilians, and then the reptilian entities, and they're all working in the non-physical, next universe out. Anyway, I got it right so far? Is the way you yeah. see it? Yeah. And also, uh, <clears throat> Courtney Brown, in one of his books, the remote viewer guy, um, he also talks about, in his remote viewing, that he spotted these uh, this level of entities uh, not the micro stuff, but the uh, grays, the taller grays and the reptilians. And also in the Gnostic teachings, we've got the grays and we've got the reptilians. And it's all non-physical, but there's another realm outside of this that's very real. People that get out of body know it. And they walk around in these different realms and reality systems, universes. And this is where these reptilians also operate. So sometimes there are this uh, AI, artificial intelligence, is involved. What we've noticed in our uh, research so far is sometimes the AI will be top dog in a particular thing that's affecting Ogvila that we've been working on. Or sometimes they'll be the AI, but there'll be some other higher order of entity in charge of or something to do with the AI. So it's been going both ways in that. Yeah. yeah. So far. So, for, so so then. Yep. Yeah. yeah. On top of all those, you know, of uh, all the AIs, reptilians, and others, I've also met like them. are just archons. Marduk was an interesting one. Uh, other uh, entities that look like more of a tortoise, or just like you know, like a turtle, but like a different. Like, it's, it's it's not a good one. It's not a good entity because like it, it can, it's it's a pretty good empath. It knows our emotions, but it's like really working with the dark side and riding us out so that they can mess with us. Yeah. <clears throat> so the way you the the way we 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 deal with it, <clears throat> you you have to approach it from the perspective that uh, you are a very powerful being because uh, you are. Um, <clears throat> you wouldn't even be interested in this conversation. 
if if you couldn't relate to this, and if you can relate to it, uh, you're going to be a, a a pretty high level being in the other universes. And uh, from there, you kind of get in touch with your power. You 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 know who you are, what you are, and how what you can do relative to what they are and how they can operate. And they don't have an imagination. They can't create the world they live in, including their physical bodies or their their next universe out bodies. <clears throat> I mean, they can create them with technology and that sort of stuff, but uh, they can't imagine themselves into existence. They can't travel without technology, space travel. Uh, they can't consciousness shift from one place to another uh, without their technology. And uh, so we've gotten uh, deceived over millions and millions of years. We've uh, agreed to this and agreed to that, and we forgot this, and we forgot where this, and how we did this, and why that. And it gets all, and sometimes we'll do things and we feel bad about it, and then we'll limit ourselves because, oh, I'll never do that again. I'm so sorry. Uh, you know, we do all this stuff back and forth, but so many billions of years go by uh, of being a very powerful being and you get caught up in your limitation or you came from a very powerful place and you go, I got to get down there and help people wake up and help them get free of this disgustingly painful, miserable, eternal life. They're going to keep living if they keep going back and reincarnating into the physical realm. Uh, so I want to help. So you come from this really high place, but you got to agree consciously to dumb yourself down, forget, put yourself in limitation and do, 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 and then you get born in a physical body like this and you're just dumb as a rock, just like everybody else. Uh, and then it's a challenge, but you learn how to wake yourself up uh, as would somebody that's been trapped for a very long time. And you go, this is how you can do it. Do what I did sort of thing. And so everybody, there's a lot of beings, I think, that are here right now. They're, they're enlightening, waking people up, sharing information on different levels, uh, and different people need different kinds of information to wake up. Uh, and uh, as we do wake up, more people wake up, and then more and more. And that's kind of the plan to help the people that, that intend to wake up, want to wake up, want to break free of this, believe there's something greater, better than, than Earth life and Earth experience and the physical reality system of experience. For these people, these kinds of beings, People like you and me and Akvila, we're here to make that happen in one generation or another. We're here. This is what we do. And uh, there's so many good people working on this on so many levels. Uh, and uh, that's that's what we've been learning and that's what we've been involved in lately. Yeah. yeah. And something I want to ask is that we as people are, are really powerful. Like all the archons and all the entities out there, they are not even close to who you are and all your capabilities. They can do something to you with technologies, with their entities, with their thoughts. They can affect your surroundings, affect people, affect thoughts, feelings, emotions. But if you don't give them control, if you control yourself, they can't mess with you. Like, we are that powerful. We can unlock them, undo them with a single <clears throat> thought. All their fleets, like a uh, hundred thousand spaceships and, and, and like messing with you, or whatever, like it just can, you can take a million of these, and it'll take you one thought to get rid of them all. You're that powerful. So for us, like you know, we were talking about in the beginning of the video how we were doing sort of work, you know, the anti removal and soul retrieval work and like soul counter provocation, all the different things. And as we've been working more and more, we've been targeting a lot of entities, a lot of reptilians, and just making big changes out there for ourselves and our own universes. And what happened is that the more change we did the more they started targeting us because they did not like how we're constantly every day like few hours a day messing with them they did not yeah. like that at all and they started like messing with people around us messing with our surroundings messing with our connection like different things messing with our thoughts our feelings emotions like enhancing our things because Rish and i we talked about those entities and how they can affect you so you know i just like want to add my part to this whole thing because i've been like doing like a lot of this exploration and stuff all those like nanoparticle size entities inside you they're basically uh, tracking you 24-7. Your thoughts, your feelings, your energy, who you are, what you want to do, your intentions, 
everything you can think of is being tracked 24-7 and basically sent to their AI, to their servers, so they know what you think of, they know what you want, they know your needs, they know all, all the good things about you, all the bad things about you, and knowing all the good, they can try to mess it up. If you know that you're going to have a free day and that's the perfect day for you to do something that you always dreamed of doing for like a whole month, they'll make sure they can set up something on that day to ruin it for you. If you have a dream or something and you have a specific thing you want to do, all your plans, they'll try to mess it up so that you will not have that happy feeling. Because they don't want you to be happy. They want you to either dumb down really in the negative place, but not too negative so you would not end yourself off. Because then you're yourself off will free you. So you have to be really bad, in a really bad shape, but not too bad where they can still keep you here on Earth and mess with you longer and get just feet from your loot. And there's another part. They know all the good things about you and they know all the bad things about you. All your triggers, your fears, your concerns, all the things you have negative feelings on. And they will read, read those and pick up on those and they will try to cause the thing again and again and again as much as possible. So if you're just like watching all those things that are happening to you in your life, you can start seeing patterns. You can start seeing how people talk to each other and then something happens and one gets triggered, other gets triggered, now they have, have, they're having an argument, or how you constantly want to do something and it's like being stopped. There are patterns and if you notice them, you can stop it all. Like just simple noticing them will, will scare them because like, oh fuck, we've been fine out. You know, so they will back off. <laughs> you're that powerful. So like all this whole research we are doing is, is really amazing for me. Yeah. Yeah, and it is research. We're like, uh, it's you know, groundbreaking for us, um, especially putting it all in one session like this. <laughs> yeah, it's working really well, though, huh? Yeah, I mean, like you know, we start a session, and usually, like, I start looking like when it comes to entities, I start like scanning through my body, seeing if there are any clusters of entities messing with me, with my thoughts, with my feelings, and usually there are. And it's not uh -huh. just fifty; it's not just the hunger. It's like sometimes. And one of the last sessions, we got we got over three hundred thousand entities, just just the clusters, like several. So like I used the collective vacuum to get them all out, and now I'm looking through my surroundings, and there are literally entities who are like more of interdimensional, like they can be there out there in different universes and stuff, but they can sort of come here and have the cloaking system and like just monitor you, just be there, like not cause anything bad, but just monitor you and be like a trans tra you know transmissioner. So they will do whatever you say, they will watch your actions and intentions, and they'll like you know post everything to their like you know like a snitch. <laughs> everything you're doing is being snitched to the higher up so that they, they could set up all kinds of situations in life to mess up with you. You know, so it's a thing. <laughs> Thing. Yeah, but uh, we normally start with an issue or you know a subject to address, yeah. you know um, a condition, a worry, a concern, um, fear, uh, behavior pattern, you know a want, a don't want, uh, you know, you know something. We start with that, and then then we go from we we talk about that. And then it goes into uh, once the once she gets real familiar with the subject area, uh, then we look closer at uh, either is there a past life thing going on with that, or is there a uh, more of an entity? You know, this is caused by mostly entity stuff or a past life thing got triggered, and then we just take off one path or the other. But then we meet back up somewhere. Uh, we'll go back and we'll. If we started with entity stuff, we we'll go to soul contracts and revocating, re revoking the agreements made, and then soul fragments that might have gotten uh, lost yeah. due to this uh, this stuff. Or if we went to the past life regression stuff, maybe earlier and earlier past life regression thing, and then <clears throat> back to um, once that's done, any uh, any agreements, soul contract revocations can happen there. And then are, were there any entities that found a way to attach or get involved with you or her or me during that moment of mm, trauma way back then? And they've been following you ever since. Uh, and then soul retrieval work if some of your uh, aspects of self got lost in the trauma. And then we kind of tie it up with the soul retrieval uh, part. Good. Yeah, so like, there's a lot of projects we do all in one session. It takes like an hour or even longer sometimes, depending on how big the issue is and how much there is into it. So you, yeah. know, you deal with like little entities inside your body, you look through your surroundings, but most likely they usually have the higher-ups 
the ones who are commanding them and like forcing them to do several things. So mm -hmm. you know, the Greeks, reptilians, targeting those, just getting rid of them, and like the whole system hierarchy falls apart, and now you're free of them. At least that one cluster that, that or, or you know the group that was messing with you. So I'm not noticing a lot of changes in myself. Uh, I'm like more aware of what's going on and how they're baiting us. This whole thing about baiting is like you know, a, a new thing to us. Yeah. New, you know, but it's a thing. Just oh yeah, it really is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? No. Uh, I mean, like being aware of their baits like stops you from taking them sort of yeah yeah it's a really uh it makes me think uh we're past our 10 minute attention span <clears throat> but uh we could wrap this up and maybe do another video about their their tricks and how they do what they do and why and and what how they're getting away with doing this stuff and and we'll talk about the baiting and the and the camouflage and cloaking and stuff in another video what do you think sure that works. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you guys for watching this stuff. Um, I hope you're getting something out of it and it's helping you understand the phenomena. Um, and uh, we'll talk to you again in another video about this stuff. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Sure.